Arsenal bench seven players in the Europa League and won. Mm. Like United, I don't know if United can afford to do that. Liverpool can't afford to do that. Like Chelsea can't afford to do that. Arsenal are I'll tell you something. He might be the manager of the season. I yeah, like, even if he doesn't win the league. It is another episode of Sangalo, and it is that time of the year where you start to hear knockouts, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ringing out. I mean, yesterday or day before yesterday, I heard it in my house, and I was and I was like, wait, sorry, what is going on here? I was I was worried at first, but then I remembered it's November, it's almost Christmas, mm -hmm. and of course, these are these are normal normal things to hear. Yeah, if I guess that, I'd like first of all say good evening to everybody. Good all evening. Fans at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is a weird. Um, it's that time of the year, um, knockout season, celebration season, mm -hmm, weddings, mm -hmm, all that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to imagine fitting a World Cup in that period. Yeah, you know, December yeah. in Nigeria is dirty December. We know how we do our stuff. Right. But now there's a World Cup game. If you invite me to some stuff. <laughs> Might be funny. I mean, that's that's another thing that feels out of place. Hearing knockouts at this time of the year and the World Cup happening mm -hmm. at this time of the year. The World Cup is about 14 days away, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think. And I mean, we're going to be but having speaking most of knockouts, matches in there's the a nice tangent there. Today, they yeah. announced the knockout stages for the Champions League. Right. Can I just today? Right. We'll well, we're, to we're going to go right, right, right mm -hmm. into that. But talking about the World Cup, we're going to do a proper um, analysis of some of the games later um, mm -hmm. in the month. But what are your expectations, you know, preliminary expectations, looking forward to it? Preliminary expectations, I am hoping... It's hard to say what I expect, really. Like, um, I guess I'm expecting, I hope it's a good tournament. Um, I guess I, I'd like to see how all the circus around the tournament and all the things are concerned, if that actually has some sort of bearing on the matches, on mm. the stadiums, on fan culture around. Um, yeah, it's quite... That way. I think this World Cup might be the World Cup with the highest amount of top players. I'm not quite sure how they categorize mm. top players who will be missing out on the World Cup. So perhaps the quality will drop. Perhaps mm. that might mean we'll see Dark Horse actually win the tournament now, which mm. might make it exciting. Um, I'm hoping to see what happens, man. Man, that, that, that's actually, that, I think that would be a stretch considering how good Brazil are looking and how good, They are looking good, man. You know, but, some, of, some of the sides are looking. Uh, but coming back from that, there were big games in the Premier League over the weekend. Um, Arsenal and Manchester City going head to head in that mm -hmm, title race. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Arsenal got a, a dose of the Man City special. You right. think they've dropped points, it's almost over. And then right. last minute, 94th minute, they scored a the penalty. Like, Get ready for that, Arsenal fans. This is going to, if you're going to be in a title race in Man City, this is your future. This, this is, is the next 20 minutes. Yeah, they're and going to be breaking your hearts. This is it. I, I feel like one thing to point out is the fact that they got it against one of the traditional top six sides, mm -hmm. and, and that's good. Any time of the any the time Arsenal of the season victory? when you're yeah the Arsenal oh, yeah, victory, yeah, any time yeah, of when you're able to get that victory was very big important. one against, mm -hmm. um, and then in Stamford Bridge for that matter. Yeah, and well. not just that Stamford Bridge, I kind of like the way it came because it was like a cagey match, the type of match that you, you don't think Arsenal win that match. And the mm. way they won it, like, it was a, a scruffy goal from a centre-back off a set-piece. Like, Arsenal are winning matches the way you'd... A team winning match, I say, yeah, that's how champions win. Mm. They grind our results and so on. And that's what they did yesterday. Yeah, and uh, moving on from that, there were also big games for Liverpool and oh. for Manchester United. Uh, Liverpool mm. and Tottenham Hotspur both battling for you know one of the spots in the top mm -hmm, four mm -hmm. uh but i mean of course liverpool did the business against tottenham yeah big game um our record against tottenham is actually pretty good um but it's, it's weird because they do tend to play well so yeah it was a good game first half um we scored two goals eric dyer made a horrible mistake heading into salah's pass part to punish him and from the second half tottenham actually looked pretty good as soon as Conte was had to show some impotence. So the way the way defense is just so boring. During the mm -hmm. first half, they just allowed mm -hmm. us to cross there. When they needed that goal, they pushed Eric Dyer up front and we saw some of the problems they have faced through the season. Like they could have scored. If not, Konate had a brilliant game. Alice made a couple of good saves. So yeah, good result. Um it's good to be back to winning ways after losing those matches. But like I was saying, like Liverpool is a big game. Like we we tend to We'll step up for the game. I guess now our backs are fully against the wall. But yeah, happy to see Nunes get an assist, Salah two goals. Can't complain. Yeah, definitely. And it was interesting to see um, Una, um, I said Unai Emery, <laughs> Conte's side play better football than they've played in, yeah, in quite some time. I guess they, they had to now. Too, they were now. quite expansive. Mm -hmm. They were on the front foot for a large uh, mm -hmm. section of the game. Of course, 
the home team support mm -hmm. must have helped. But it was good to see them create chances, right. play fluid football, and not play defensive throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, but moving on from that, that gives me something that I wanted to talk about. The quality of coaching in the Premier League, it just continues to go upwards, definitely, definitely. onwards and upwards. The we best have coaches in the world are in the Premier League. Honestly, we have Unai Emery, <laughs> a... I saw. I heard a stat in that when Manu and Aston Villa were playing, where uh, the commentator said Emery has won nine trophies in the past eight seasons. That's not something. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not something you 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 take uh, yeah. lightly. Yeah. There's, Emery. there's Emery, and then there's also Lopez mm -hmm. um at, at, at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, that's Emery. Big stuff for, I for feel people. like he's he's a very good manager. Obviously, like you mm -hmm. said, his class speaks for itself. Nine trophies. These are European trophies, and it shows that my guy Steven Gerrard was just. Wasting time at Aston Villa because mm. when I look at these Villa players since he's left, if you told me Villa could get results like this at the start of the season against United, I won't have been too surprised. Like Leon Bailey is a very good player, Oli Watkins is a very good player, Brendia, Continuo, Danny Ings, these are um, Douglas Louise. Aston Villa are not a team that should be where they were in the Premier League. So that they're performing now comes as no surprise. And yeah, um, I won't be. Jared has messed up too bad. They probably can't make European football, but that's a squad that yeah. should still be hoping for stuff in the coming years. Yeah, yeah. And, and talking about Aston Villa, it was a very, very good game uh, from them. The mm -hmm. home side, you know, the home team yeah. support was, was gone amazing in the first 12 them. minutes. To be and honest. of course, there, there's that. You know, there's just that little bit of skepticism that might make you say, okay, maybe it is just a new manager bounce. But mm -hmm. I feel like Emery has enough in him to mm -hmm. show that. And like I said, the players are actually good. Sustain. Like, they will yeah. be better than they've yeah. been this season. But of course, it's still, it's still just their first game. And um, we'll be looking forward to how it pans out for Aston Villa. Of course, in the EFL, both Manchester United and Aston Villa face off Again. on Thursday. But before mm -hmm. we go to the Thursday fixture, there's a couple of matches on. But how do you feel EFL. about, um, why do you think he lost that match? Um, of course, it was too many key players missing mm. in our in our defense. We mm. have Varane, Varane missing in the middle of the Bruno. park. We had Bruno missing through suspension. Yes, uh, you know, on the wings we had Anthony missing, and then there was a lot of tinkering. We had to mm. use Garnacho. Mm. Garnacho is a good player, mm. but in a game where your opponents are up to it, so I, I feel guess, like the question you know, would be for me is that I guess your squad is just not that good because when you have to rotate the squad, the levels will drop. So, so, so here's the I feel thing: like here's that's the, the advantage here's the thing, Arsenal right? now and City have over the rest of the league. That is that all their players are in and around the same level. They're so, all around so, these so, eight over so ten this is, players. So this is what I would like. This is what I would like to say. It's not about whether the players are good enough or not good enough. Do not forget, this is just six less than six months into the reign of Eric Ten Hag. Mm -hmm. There is no way you would expect to see the level of consistency you want to see from a you know from, mm -hmm. from a Premier League winning side in this Manchester United squad. Sure. Like I said in the last episode, there has been a lot of progress, and I want to see this team face off against the bigger sides and you know show themselves. It was just unfortunate in that game. Everything conspired against Manchester United. You know, many things I would like to say conspired against Manchester United. Major misses, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, of squad, in terms of the squad, and you know, a, a home side, new manager bounce, and Aston Villa are actually a quite a very good side with very good players. So, so that's that's just that's just one game, and I would not be reactive mm. and you know just rubbish Manchester United and rubbish Eric Ten Hag's work. There has been a lot of progress, and yeah, I'd like to see how it pans out in Old Trafford on, on, on Thursday. Fair enough. I would like to see how because um, the games are coming thick and fast now, so I guess that's why we're seeing the injuries that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. on the other end of the World Cup, they're going to come thicker and faster, and at mm -hmm. that point. The players would have been playing a longer season. So, yeah, I feel like this season, we should be prepared for a lot of twists and turns across mm -hmm. the board. Like, players are going to get injured at the World Cup, players are going to come back injured, and there'll be some signings. Players are going to come back and would need rest. Exactly. So, <clears throat> yeah, you really don't know. I think the um, the teams that do the best are the teams that are going to be the most fortunate with injuries mm -hmm. this season mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. but, but sticking to the matches on Wednesday, we have a very big one Manchester City mm -hmm. and Chelsea in the evening. That's quite good to see. Um, I like it when I like when the big teams play early in these competitions. Like, <laughs> let's get some of them out. And then that's why there's hope for like smaller teams to win mm -hmm. a trophy, like a championship team. Like, let's not... It's kind of boring. Like, the four teams left in the Carabao Cup are the four best teams in England. Right, like, like it happened who, who really season. wants to watch that again? Yeah, yeah. yeah, honestly. Like, let's have a random post spot in the mix or something. True, true, <laughs> true. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Manchester City versus Chelsea in Etihad. There's also Newcastle versus Crystal Palace. Newcastle Another are Premier. doing the business. They want Crystal, to make top four this season. And they <laughs> look like they can't do it. Like, and especially this season, we were describing the season that anything can happen. It can yeah. be how, like, Leicester was a rare season and the stars aligned for them. The stars might align for Newcastle. Castle and us now because it's a red season and yeah. they might <laughs> both of our chief. Yeah, definitely. Newcastle, um, they 
put four past Southampton um, mm -hmm. on Sunday. And yeah, it was big. Trippier, of course, bagged sure. a healthy But he points. walked off the pitch. So, me, England, yeah. I had the most right backs in world football. I was saying, and now I'm left with South just Gates, one or two. Make a decision and pick one. He has one yeah, left. It's crazy. He it's might crazy. have one left, and then, like, Ben White might have to maybe play right back. He might have to pick up someone from, like, one of these lower division teams just to make the numbers now. Man, it's crazy. Man, man. It's, it's, it's going to be big. And let's see how uh, Newcastle and Crystal Palace uh, pans out. But I feel like Newcastle might want to, you know, just put their foot off the pedal a little bit because of yeah. EFL Cup and focus on. You know, but like, yeah, Newcastle, they've been fortunate that they don't have European football, so maybe they don't yeah, have to put their foot on it, they can helped. just play. That definitely has helped them. <laughs> so in I the think. top four, they're the team that they're going to be fresh every week. And that's what I was saying about Arsenal. That's another thing Arsenal have, like, Arsenal benched seven players in the Europa League and won. Mm. Like, United, I don't know if United can afford to do that. Liverpool can't afford to do that. Like, Chelsea can't afford to do that. Arsenal are... I'll tell you something. He might be the manager of the season. Yeah, like, big even up. if he doesn't win the league, he might be the manager of the season. There's also Liverpool versus Derby County on Wednesday and Nottingham Forest against Tottenham Hotspur on Wednesday as well. Liverpool, Derby? Yeah, um, yeah we should be Derby. Um, these are the type of games I'd like to see. Give James Milner his games here. Give Carvalho, Javier Elias, Curtis Jones his games here. Um, yeah, to be honest, that's on avoid injury, man. So, club do whatever I like with this competition. Right, My priorities right, are also like. Right, right. <laughs> and to wrap things up very, very quickly, UCL draw and Europa League draw for the next phase of games that will happen, I think, in February. Mm -hmm. um, what are you expecting to see? Um, I guess we know who can play who. I'm hoping to avoid the bigger boys. As a team that finished second, you can play. So we can play Bayern Munich, we can play Real Madrid. Um, but what's tricky is that we could see, we probably will see, we hopefully see a big tie here. With PSG finishing second and Liverpool finishing second, you could potentially have PSG versus Real Madrid. You can have Liverpool versus Bayern Munich in the round of 16, which is which is exciting. Yeah, at the end of the day, these are the kinds of games that, as football fans, you love to see. Definitely um, keep your fingers crossed. Before the announcements are made, let us know what you think would be the, the best matchups um, for the UCL round of 16 and the Europa League knockout rounds uh, before the round of 16, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? So, no, yeah, yeah it's, before, it's actually 32? before the round of 16. Is Europa it's League a round of 32 now? Round of 32 now, yeah. So. Um, so, definitely let us know what you think in the comment section below anywhere that you're watching it. That was an episode. It was amazing to have um, Shopsy on the right hand side today. It usually comes off, you know, on the left hand side <laughs> and then dribbles in and cutting then, off the right. Bags in, <laughs> the bags in those goals. Yeah, definitely we'll see you guys in mm -hmm. the next one. Peace. Safe.